Hi, I'm Mary Preston. And Here's yeah. Rosenblum. Here's <laughs> Rosenblum this morning, and we're talking about this uh, taped interview that we did with Jean about being Jewish. What were you most surprised about? I was surprised um, that he had as strong a, a Jewish education as he had. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, to hear that and to see that there were uh, Hebrew uh, books there, books in Hebrew, mm -hmm. uh, that he had attended Talmud Torah. Yeah, it was, I was surprised. Yes, how indebted yeah. he was yeah. in Jewish life. Right. He was by Mitzvah. Yeah, he was about Mitzvah, he said, in Brooklyn. Um, my, he, he said that he left, he, that they escaped from Austria when he was about 12. And he had Bar Mitzvah when they came to Brooklyn, New York. By uh, Holland, France. That, was that story, such an incredible story. And I, I remember he had told me a few years ago about how there were all kinds of um, escape routes mm -hmm. that people knew about, and then different people would find out about different ones. And what was that story about the woman who his father called the angel right. that had helped them to escape a Jewish woman? Jewish in woman. Town. Right, and... Um, in Vienna, right? In Vienna. Yes. And uh, they took a train somewhere. Right. She uh -huh. found she, she found, found this train route. Yes. And uh, she also, they knew when to cross the border uh, into, uh, I guess it was Holland. Um, she said that every, they knew that Sunday mornings, the usual guard at the border went to church. And so someone else took over who didn't care very much about the whole thing. And um, so they waited until Sunday morning. And that's when they crossed without difficulty. They would, he, he said his father had some papers. He talked about the blue one. Oh, these precious yes. papers yes, had, yes. had arrived so that they were able to, yes. to and get then, out. And then that. that Part about how the papers had just arrived the day that they were leaving. Yes, he went. Yes. His father went up to check the mail, yes. and these these papers that would allow them to escape had just arrived, just arrived. in this blue envelope, and he yeah. could remember the 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 look of that blue that precious blue envelope. Yes, yeah. Yeah. and I remember in the in the story that they. Um, they stopped, the train stopped, and they were looking for someone and asked people, called out people's names, mm -hmm. and uh, his, his heart was in his mouth, and they didn't call out mm -hmm. their names. Right. And so it was he and his mother and father that escape through this this route. And I think you had asked also what what happened with this woman and apparently his uh, Jean's father helped her to escape later on after yes. she had um, been this angel to so many others. So yes, isn't that amazing? Isn't it wonderful that she actually was able to escape yeah. also. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's the story of uh, being in Holland and uh, his memory of this tiny little room with so many people that, um, I forget the metaphor he used, that, that there wasn't room to take a breath uh, that yeah. they were living in. Yeah, waiting for... I guess the okay or the tickets and so on to, to come to the States reminded me of you know, the images and the descriptions from Anne Frank 
the numbers of people crowded in, waiting, fighting, so on and so on. I, um, you know, he told a couple of stories there that it was not so clear on. Uh, one being that while they were in Vienna, his father had been um, rounded up and was a was in jail. Yes, for a while. his father was in jail. And yes. um, I said something about, do you, do you remember or how it was for you to know that your father was jailed? And he sort of said, well, it wasn't as bad. I don't exactly remember, but. Uh, he was jailed with a lot of good people, and they were able to talk, and it wasn't so terrible. And there were a number of times that he spoke, it was like it was an attempt to to reduce the trauma or something. I, you know, to, and it wasn't as horrible as as one might hear. I think it. Think it right, be, right, something like that. Yes, yes. It was a yes. little unclear for me, some of Yes, that. yes. And then that that story about um, uh, about his being in, in Holland and the uh, barrels of carrots. Uh, yes. And when <laughs> I had asked him what he wanted me to bring him, he said, "I would love that really salty herring with the fish." And his memory of being able to uh, buy, this was poor people's food, right. this very salty herring. And they would wrap it in a piece of newspaper right. and take it home and soak it in water for about a half hour before they could eat it. And this to him was the taste of freedom. He was there, he had that herring, and when I brought it to him from Russ and daughters, he, he almost wept um, tasting tasting that. Yeah. He said the, the richer people, you know, had herring in oil, but of oh. course they couldn't afford uh -huh. that. Uh -huh. But what he wants is the herring, the schmaltz herring, <laughs> it's very, very <laughs> salty. That's, that's what brings that. That felt sense then. Yeah. Okay. He also said something about, again, it was not so clear, that he and his father were picked up and hold briefly. Yes, they were, the police, they were in prison. They were both in prison. Yes. And he didn't, he didn't go there. No. Anytime I would say something like, oh my god, that must have been. You sort of shift. Yes, and yes, yes. Onto something that goes like this around really what, what I see, imagine is very traumatic, frightening experiences in prison makes uh, separations from father. Well, we you know. would we would think that, yeah. and we might think that he's. Um, so repressing that, or it may be that from a child's point right. of view, he felt very safe with his father, yeah. and they were victorious, and he loved America, he loved uh, English, he, he learned English, you know, within a few months, yeah. and did very, very well, and felt very at home in America, it was like coming home. Coming home to some place, perhaps. Yeah. I think the other thing that he that touched me was uh, his uh, father moved them down to the Washington D.C. area for a while, as they were trying to get settled here and his father finding work and so on and so forth. And and he said something about his father didn't want to stay in Brooklyn. It was too. Uh, I thought maybe it was uh, too too Jewish or too old, too connected with your yeah. isolated something. Yeah. Yes, yes, something again, not so clear. But you said when they were in Washington, he was in school there, public school. Um, it was still uh, segregated public schools. Mm, yes, and, and he was horrified. And he was that. horrified, and he uh, said something like, oh, 
you know, blacks are America's uh, Jews. Yes. They yes. are being discriminated yes. against here. And how, um, how upsetting that was for him. Yes. This was yes. not the American that he knew. Yes. yes. 